I, I want my life to be embedded in my work, crushed in my paintings. Right. Uh, the spirit of being, if the spirit of being isn't present in the face of this work, it should be destroyed because it's meaningless. Right. I'm not making something, I'm making a cinnamon, a synonym for the truth in all its falsehood, as bleak as it is. I am making icons that present life in terms of death, a basket of mistakes. I like that last touch. Of in terms of our, own, our death. Oh, so bleak as it is. A bleak as it yeah. is, yeah. Anyway, I wrote that in 1978. Really? Yeah. I'm quoting you. So I was in, how old was I in 1978? That was in the summer, so I wasn't 20, I was 27. Was it, just not 27 mm -hmm. yet. Uh, so obviously, as John Michaud would say, that's the, the pr product of a young mind. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think I, yeah, basically I'm saying you should destroy my work if it's a lie. Uh -huh. uh, and Do you destroy any of your work? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, these days I paint over it. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, 1977, I actually painted over so many paintings that I only had seven paintings mm -hmm. that I painted that year. But I knew less about what I was doing at that time than I do now, and so I'm more comfortable with not knowing what I'm doing. Is there another film in the works? No. No. I don't want to make a film for a while. I want to paint. Uh-huh, for a while. And I've been actually out in Montauk uh -huh. painting, and so the last work that's in this show that's not here yet is going to be here on Friday, and I finished it about two weeks ago. I'm leaving this Friday. Maybe. Yeah. I brought you a present. Thank you. Because I know you're reading. You, you may have read it. Do you oh. I know this writer. No, I didn't read this book. This is his obituary. Uh -huh. And it's the most interesting stylistically. He doesn't use any commas after everything, no, no punctuation. Uh, I'm reading, I'm doing a study. I'm going to read like most of his books. His bestseller was uh, On Blindness. Oh, yes. But I, which I never read, but this, several of his books are just amazing. So I thought... Yeah, this is, uh, Rula's a big fan of his work. Really? Good, good. Wow. Well, thank you what so much. What a nice present. Very thoughtful. Yeah, well, I, I know you read voraciously, and I do too. And I... I probably don't read as voraciously as you do, but thank you for saying that. I have read a couple things. Well, you quote in all the right places. <laughs> Yeah, well, I remember things. I have I a good have memory. No memory. That's why I. Um, so um, anyway, I think that the movie is. Uh, I, I'm ready for everybody to see it. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that I felt compelled to do, and uh, and it's really and the way that the book actually was written. I mean, I read a very rough translation of it because mm -hmm. a script was given to me. Rula said somebody wrote a script. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think of it? I mean, you think this, it's good? Or whatever. I said, listen, I'm probably not going to like it. I don't really like anything. Uh, and, but I'll read it. And then I read it, and I didn't like it, <laughs> the script. But I said, can I read your book? Because there's something in here that I think is a very interesting story. And I read the book, and I thought, well, that could be a really good movie. That's more of a script, I said to her, than the script. Are we going to cry at all? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You're going to be there on the 13th? You're going to see the movie on the 13th? Or uh, where are you going I'm to be? I'm going to be back in New York on September 1st. So you're not going to be here for the film festival? Right, right. I'm not. I'll tell you what. You have Ed's number. I'll, when there's a screening in New York, yeah. and that will happen soon, yeah. I'll invite you. Oh, good. I really want to see okay, it. Okay, I might not be there because I'm going to be uh -huh. on the 2nd. We're showing the movie in Venice. Uh -huh. But I'd love to talk to you after you see the movie. Yeah, I would, I'm very interested to see because this is a test. You know, I, I like to read the books sometime and then see the film to see how it's brought to it's life. It's very different. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think that what I loved about the book, for example, that story about the girl who went away for the summer and she met the boy who uh, picked her up on the motorcycle and they were really in love and she had no idea that he was going to meet her but he died in some kind of manifestation right, because he right. was just trying to yeah. find the guy to deliver a tire to him. Mm -hmm. And then the girl comes back to school and... And, uh, and she's not talking to anybody, so uh, Hind realizes that there's a problem, and she was pregnant, and then the mother shows up and says to Hind, you know, she wants to disown this girl, and how could she do that? And Hind says to her, when your child needs you the most, this is not the time to abandon her. 
and uh, this kind of modern person, a woman who would actually then have a, an abortion. Who plays him, Vanessa? No, Ian Abbas, uh -huh. the woman who was in The Visitor. Uh -huh. And also she was in Lemon Tree. She's a very, very good actress, and she was actually Olatz's acting coach in The Diving Bell and the Butterfly. My, my, Actually, your children have been in a lot of your movies, too. My parents are in all your my parents, movies. Right, I, I and even that. in The Diving Bell and the Butterfly, there's a picture of my mother and father in Jean Doe's room. Taken at the Raleigh in the 50s. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, well, I'm doing a, I'm trying to do my homework. And you are. So, you did. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Well, I, I appreciate I it, too. I didn't talk to you. You didn't at all. I was, ple I was pleasantly surprised. Well, thank you. Okay. Amanda. And who are you? Uh, Steve Ronco. I'm the publisher of the magazine. Uh -huh. Great. Well, he did a great job. Well, he did great. He did fabulous. I was nervous as all hell. Well, I don't usually do interviews. You, you know what? I don't know if you do or you don't. You're just kidding with me. But Irving Penn took my photograph before he died, and he said to me, I'm scared. Uh -huh. I said, what are you scared I'm of? I'm in good company. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He said, he, I don't know who you are. Uh, you're, I know who Julian Schnabel is, but you're so many different people. Yeah. And I said, well, mm -hmm. well, and then I sat down with him and we talked for a while. Mm -hmm. And it was really like being in a, in a psychoanalyst's office. There was a little felt table. Yeah. And, and then he took my picture. And it was very austere, the whole setup. And at the end, he said to me, we're coming to the end of a wonderful experience. I, I, ho I hope you feel the same. Uh, well, I, I enjoyed this more than him taking my picture. I did not like the picture he took. I did like meeting him. Did you like the Annie Leibovitz picture of you? I sent on the it around. Yeah, yeah. I sent it around. Said Julian Schnabel, a sex symbol. It's a very. <laughs> oh, that's not a bad picture. It is. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank good you. Morning. Good luck. I'll Bye. see you again. And I'll do that. Uh, I'll I'll arrange something so when we're watching the movie, you can see it. Oh, I one I try I try to get. The Weinstein and company, they would, you know. I'll, I'll organize. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye.